What's going on? You're watching Bass TV, and we're here today to talk about the patch 4.4 Save the World updates. If I sound a little weird, it's because I'm not feeling too well, but we're going to get through this. Because honestly, we have some new things here that I'm a little excited to get to. First, we'll start off with missions and systems. Blockbuster Part 3 has been added. The Cloak Star is now available, and it's only three missions. So if you want that new Mythic Ninja, The Cloak Star, you only got to do three missions to get it. That is if you completed part one and part two of your blockbuster event already. But we'll talk about that ninja in a second. If you are one of those people who haven't completed part two of your blockbuster event yet, you might be stuck on the blocked mission. It's funny because it's called blocked, but it'll increase the drops of sheet metal that you get so you can progress a little bit faster. They also increased the drops of rain that appear in mini llamas. So if you're doing a whole bunch of storm shield defenses, expect more drops of rain which is great. The chance to get hero, schematic, and survivor XP from mission rewards now gradually increases from the beginning of Canny to the end of Twine. They remove rotating gizmos from Canny Valley and Twine Peak mission rewards, which is amazing. I can't stand getting rotating gizmos when you legit just need them for the Founders Revolt. That's all, that's all, I, that's all I need it for. Another thing for the people who haven't finished the Blockbuster Part 2, the quests now mention the zone types where they can be completed, which is a great help. Next is Heroes or Hero. We got that new mythic ninja, the Cloak Star. And like I said before, you only have to do three missions of that blockbuster quest line to get it. It is a new subclass, a masterful shinobi who unleashes waves of throwing stars from the shadows. The tactical perk, fan of stars. All throwing stars are thrown instantly in a spreading arc. Woo! -woo. And that's really all there is for heroes. I mean, there's some bug fixes, but I will leave a link in the description if you guys want to go over these patch notes in detail. Now let's move on to the new weapon that will be available in the event store Wednesday, June 13th at 8 p.m. Eastern. It's called the Obliterator Sniper Rifle. It is a slow firing anti-material rifle with a high base damage and a heavy kick. Its shots pierce through walls and husks alike and can quickly obliterate structures. I don't really know yet, because I did see some people say, oh, it's probably just gonna be exactly like the Neon Sniper Rifle, where you can see through walls and you can shoot through walls and all that. This doesn't say you could see through walls, but it damn sure it can pierce through walls. The difference is, is apparently it can obliterate structures. So we gonna see, we gonna see. And if that even sounds like something you want, it's only gonna be available from the 13th to the 20th. So once it drops on Wednesday at 8 p.m., you better grab it up before it's gone. The next thing is what we all really wanted. Added perk choices to items that previously had static perk loadouts. Ooh. It says eligible items will always start with their default set of perks. Obviously, these perks can now be modified with the perk Recombo later. Some weapons which previously started with a fixed element unlocked at level one will now unlock that slot at level five, but have multiple element choices. That means stuff like Hydra can now have water, fire, nature, physical, not just energy. Woo! They also added a new weapon perk called Impact, and that will appear on several of the previously static weapons. So if you see that show up, don't be like, oh my god, what is this? Resources can now be gathered while using heavy melee attacks. And that's probably because they increased the base damage and impact of melee weapons across the board. Swords got plus 57% all the way down to blunt weapons with a plus 113% damage increase. But obviously because of that, melee weapons are going to cost a little bit more, especially the energy weapons. They're increasing the battery cost for crafting energy weapons. Also, it seems that they fixed the melee weapon perk bugs. So the movement speed perk now applies to sprint speed as well as run and walk speed. And the damage resistance perk now grants the proper amount of damage resistance. And last but certainly not least, teleporter changes. Defenders can no longer be teleported and this is to prevent them from entering a buggy state. Also teleportation pads now activate when they're first dropped. And yes, they fixed the issue with Lars's van on the Ride the Lightning mission. So no more teleporter glitch. Once again, the perk of Brind is real. Anyways, that's really it. Like I said, I'll leave a link in the description if you guys want to get in detail. But leave a comment. Let me know what you like the most from this patch 4.4. I know for me, it's the fact that you could recombobulate previously static weapon perks. I love it. Hydra coming soon. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like. If you're new, subscribe. This has been Abatata TV, and I am out.